us with your power Live inside of me Welcome Holy Spirit We are in your presence Fill us with your power Live inside of me Hello dear friends Okay, let us continue with the reflections that we had yesterday. We already were discussing about the person of Nehemiah. How he went to the king to ask for the permission. And after narrating all these situations, we find Nehemiah asking the king in chapter 2 verse 5 I ask that you send me to Judah to the city of my ancestors ancestors graves so that I may rebuild it and therefore when he asked the permission the queen who was also there Asked him, if you go, when will you return? And so on. And the reply given by Nehemiah is given in verse 7. I said to the king, if it pleases the king, let letters be given me to the governors of the province beyond the river, that they may grant me passage until I arrive in Judah. And then a letter to Asaph, the keeper of King's Forest, directing him to give me the timber to make beams for the gates of the temple, temple fortress, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall occupy. And the king granted me what I asked for. Thus we see, he had very clear plans and he managed to execute his plan properly and wisely. And that is what we will see here. Nehemiah was a wise man and he had approached the king at an opportune time, he waited for four months and then only he went to the king with a clear plan and precision. You can say, and he prepared or he prepared everything needed for his journey, secured the necessary letters. And here we see, for a safe passage through the land of the governors on the other side of river Euphrates till the Mediterranean or till Palestine and also for the timber needed for the construction on all kinds of things he got the letters and that is what we will find here. Therefore, he also, while preparing for the journey, asked for the protection of the soldiers. Yesterday had denied the protection of the soldiers. He was trusting in the Lord. But Nehemiah, he asked for the protection of the soldiers because he thought that would be better for him so that without any tension and anxiety he can go through the land. And therefore we can see that he foresaw 
all the possible obstacles and all the needs and secured necessary letters to meet these needs or overcome the objections and that's what we can see and he also got permission for the construction of the city gate the temple gate then city wall everything he got permission from the king and now he is going forward and here we say he knew that there would be the enemies oppositions as i said from internal group and also from external group two great enemies of the people of jerusalem were sanballat he was the governor of samaria and he was controlling for the time being juda also he was opposed to the jews and there was another one in ammon ammon also was a province of persia at that time and tobias tobias he was the enemy there or he was the governor there and he too was an enemy for for the jews or against the jews and it is interesting to see that tobia is called the ammonite sanballat the coronite and tobia the ammonite actually tobia was a jew but he is called purposefully an ammonite is a sarcastic use and that is opinion of the scholars okay therefore it is clear that there were two governors who were very strictly opposed to any construction by the jews because they thought if the jews construct the city wall and so on they will declare revolt against the king and that is what they wanted to uh, inform the king okay and thus we see the important enemies were there sanballat and tobia and they did not like the coming of the coming of nehemia and there is added reason for that nehemia was appointed as the governor of juda and juda was separately erected as a province now and entrusted to uh, the care of the new governor we know earlier serbabel and so on came to jerusalem and then he was appointed as the governor of juda but at a later time juda became a part of samaria and the samarian governor uh, used to take care of juda and actually he will resent such steps of separation because he is losing some of his land or the land under his custody and that is why he is opposing the construction and so on okay therefore these are the way in these are the ways in which he uh, found the way to proceed to jerusalem and also the opposition that he would face in jerusalem and in the second part of the chapter 
in verses 11 to 20, we find Nehemiah is already in Jerusalem. After traveling for four months, he reached Jerusalem. And now, what does he do? He chose a few very faithful fellow men. And he did not disclose his plan. But he went around the city. And the city war by the night. And he could not go all around the city wall because in some places it was totally destroyed and damaged and so on. But anyhow, he managed to make a round trip or around, he go around the city wall. And he went by night so that nobody else may notice it. And after going around the city wall, he understood one thing. The city wall is totally destroyed in some places. And in some other places, it is partially destroyed. What is partially destroyed is to be restored, renovated. And what is totally destroyed is to be rebuilt. Therefore, that is the great task before him. And now, after examining the city wall by the night, he discloses a plan to, his, uh, to the group of people who were with him, the faithful ones. And he said to them that they are to rebuild the city wall at the earliest and the people should support it. Only with the help of the people it can be done. It is a laborious task but it needs to be done at the earliest. And his inspection of the city wall was not known to anybody and therefore nobody felt any doubt about the presence of uh, Nehemiah there. Okay, now we see when Sanbalat and Tobia came to know that he is appointed as the governor of Judah, they did not like it and they began to raise objections to the building of the city wall and so on. And what did Nehemiah do? He had the foresight and he knew what is to be done. And therefore he prepared a plan and he was really convinced of what he is supposed to do. And it is said, verse 17, Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, so that we may no longer suffer disgrace. Disgrace in the sense that they are always being attacked by the enemy and they are unable to stop the attackers. And hence, urgently needed is the city wall. And he prepared the plans for it. Then it is said, verse 18, last part, let us start building. So they committed themselves to the common good. And therefore, we know Nehemiah was able to convince them that it is necessary to construct the city wall and that is for the common good, not for the good of any particular individual and so on. And he was very clear about what 
work is to be done and when the news reach sanbalat and tobia then they came against them opposing the plan and now not only these but other enemies the arabs from the west then the people of ashdod they also came against judah and we will find in verse 19 they mocked and ridiculed us saying therefore this is the first step the enemies adopted they mocked and ridiculed us and then it said what is this that you are doing as if they did not understand of course it is ridiculing nehemia and the workers again are you rebelling against the king to rebuild the city wall was always considered to be as a sign of rebellion against the king the reason is once the city wall is built the people inside are safe and the enemy cannot come and attack them so easily and they will be free from the looters the dacoits and therefore the construction of the city wall will give them a strength which they would lack without it and therefore here we see the enemies are asking this question what is this you are doing are you rebelling against the king and i replied the god of heaven is the one who will give us success therefore he says we are doing it for the sake of god and he will give us success and we are going to start the building and you will have no right in this therefore this is the way how he plans to proceed and this is the story narrated in chapter 2 okay now we go to chapter 3 and in chapter 3 we find nehemia was a man of leadership qualities and therefore what did he do he chose efficient and also faithful men as leaders to organize the work to be done and we find when the people of jerusalem saw that nehemiah has come with the power as the governor and he is going to build the city wall they all were supporting him because it was something good for them their houses will be safe and therefore he began the work of the city wall and what did, how did he proceed we can say here he chose ten capable men and they were well known but with a character and fidelity and they were interested with a particular task each were assigned to do the construction work of the city wall part by part each one was entrusted with the duty of constructing a part and there is also another story that is being said about this he chose the people as leaders from the area 
and entrusted them the work of the city wall of that area and that would mean he would gather the leader would gather together the people living in the nearby houses suppose an area of 50 meters or 70 meters or 100 meters is entrusted to one how would he handle it he calls together the people living there and then conveys the news that we are going to build a city wall to protect your houses because you are the ones who are going to benefit out of it and your houses will then be protected by the city wall and the people were happy with it and they came forward to build and thus nehemia was able to energize and motivate all the people to come forward for the construction and the people were only really happy with it because they understood that once the city wall gets finished there will be their houses will be safe and they will will be protected against the attacks of the coits and so on and therefore they came forward and thus we see the division of the labor among the chosen leaders is done by the efficient leader nehemia and that's why early we said he was a very efficient leader and he had all the leadership qualities and the names of the 10 leaders are also given here and they are also entrusted with the task of building the area building the entrusted to them and this is what we can see and okay this is how uh, he was able to go forward with the construction and the leaders names and the area entrusted to them are narrated in detail in chapter 3 and not only that we find the area built by them included a gate also thus we find 10 city gates were built so that the people of the area could pass out from uh, the city through these city gates and the city gates had different names and practically the gate belonged to the area where the construction of the city wall was entrusted to one particular leader therefore this is how the construction work went forward in the beginning and the construction began all over at the same time and as it was said earlier some parts were very um, some parts were to be built very strongly from the foundation some parts were to be renovated therefore things were in a way not easy for the leaders and the workers but that is the way how the things went forward and therefore this is a story that is narrated in chapter 3 okay now we can go to chapter 4 in chapter 4 we find the opposing groups come forward and take leadership in organizing an attack against nehemia and the leaders 
as we said earlier, were Sanballat and Tobia. And now they come together and encounter the Jews. In chapter 4 verse 1, Sanballat greatly angry and enraged and he mocked at the Jews. He said in the presence of his associates, what are these feeble Jews doing or the weak Jews doing? Will they restore things? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish it in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burned ones? Tobia the Ammonite was beside him and said, That stone wall they are building, any folks going up on it would break it down. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their taunt back on their, on their own heads and give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover their guilt. Therefore, this is the prayer offered by Nehemiah. And therefore, we see on one side the enemies ridicule them. They try to stop them by asking questions. And on the other side, to overcome all these obstacles, Nehemiah and his people are praying to Yahweh. And here we see the questions raised by the enemies. They were to ridicule and mock the Jews. And the questions, as we heard, mainly bring out the inefficiency or the weakness of the people. What can these weak Jews do? These people are unable to do anything. And then, will they restore the city wall? And will they offer sacrifices? Will they be able to find the needed stones from the heap of ruins? And when Sanballat came forward with such questions, Tobia contributed his share in mocking the people. The Jews have built the stone wall. But if a fox climbs over it, it did fall down. And therefore, he is referring to the fact that the city wall is built in a weak manner. It is not strong and it is of inferior quality in a way. And it is said from the excavations made on the site, the city wall made by Nehemiah was not very strong compared to the early, uh, the, compared to the parts of the early city wall. But for the time being, that was needed and that is enough. It was rather strong and hence the most important purpose for them was to finish it at the earliest. And it was not an easy task, they knew, because the city, the enemies were strong and 
will find Nehemiah was very strong in his mind and heart and he was able to motivate the people and therefore he took forward the construction work in the best way possible and of course it was not easy for him and it was not easy for the people and now understanding or realizing the situations and also the possible damages that could be done by the enemies Nehemiah was trying to find out some solutions to protect the city wall and also to protect the workers who were working and this plan and also its execution we will find in the coming session for the time being we conclude this session okay thank you all powerful god give us the wisdom to discover you the intelligence to understand you the diligence to seek after you the patience to wait for you eyes to behold you and a life to proclaim you through the power of the spirit of jesus our lord amen